Do you think, I told Christine this, I'm Josh Allen's dad. Okay. The Wyoming quarterback. Carried the program for years. Right. Now he's got an injury. Am I a jerk if I told my son, do not, as a top five pick, risk injury for the Wyoming Cowboys? I mean. Am I a jerky dad? No, you're not. My son carried your program. You won you games you had no business even being in. Sure. And it's like now we're playing in a meaningless Idaho potato yeah, spud so, bowl. By the way, if you're Central Michigan and Wyoming, it's like, all right, we're, we're going to a bowl game. Where are you going, Boise? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Can we be Houston? But I uh, see like McCaffrey and Fernet, and my thing is, it, if it's not the Fiesta Bowl. I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't, I don't love it, but I don't think anything less of these players if they make that decision. I mean, Connor Williams at Texas, the left tackle, He's made that decision. Deshaun Elliott, this, uh, one of the safeties for Texas, has yeah. made that decision. Derwin James from Florida State. And and you're already seeing that less attention has been paid than what was last year with McCaffrey right. and Fournette because it's more commonplace. If Josh Allen decides that he's not healthy enough or he doesn't want to risk it, I think that's totally his prerogative. I don't think he owes it to them to go out there and play in the bowl game. Now, if it was me, I would play. But – if he doesn't, I'm not going to think anything less of him. He does have that sprained shoulder That's right. that you were talking no, it's about. No, real, it's a real thing. He has said, and, and I'm quoting, if I'm 100%, I will play. There is a lot of leeway there. Now, it sounds, if you're a Wyoming fan, it's like, oh, okay, so if he's ready, he, he's going to go. All he has to say is, hey, I'm not quite healthy. And whether it's true or not, it gives him um, kind of a great would you? Would you? I know this is kind of a hackneyed topic. Would you pay players in football? Um, I would. Um and this is actually going to transition without you even knowing it into something you were going to ask me anyways, which was the coaching carousel. Right. Um, I would pay players, but it would be for their name and likeness. Okay. So it wouldn't just be a, a straight salary just because it would, it would be somewhat of an Olympic model that was a little bit more governed and a little bit more unique than the Olympic model, because I believe that a player should be able to monetize his own name and likeness. The fact that you have to sign that away, I just, there's something about it that doesn't seem right. Totally agree. I, I've said this before. Now, tell me if I'm wrong. My theory, like, it's very rare when you get a Tebow, Reggie Bush, and yeah. Tebow in my, in my life. The two college players that could have made millions of dollars on their name, Reggie Bush and Tebow. Literally, L.A. had Reggie Bush jerseys. You go to a high school game, go to a Laker game, and Tebow. Yeah. Now that Vince Young, Johnny Manziel, those two. Liner would have been in there. He would have been in LA. there. My thing is, you write players. It's audited. So when a player leaves college, you write a check to Tim Tebow for hmm. digital merchandising. There's a system set up. So that way you're not paying the player, but these occasional players who can move traffic and move move movement numbers digitally yeah. or. You just write him a check for one point eight million dollars. Here it is. I, and I understand. Listen on the on the face of it, that sounds easy, right? right. It, like an easy model. And I understand that it gets into well. Then all of a sudden, the boosters of some program decide that they're going to sponsor some kid for right. his name and likeness, and it gets him. And I understand that there's listen. There's a lot of gray area. Now I'm just saying, is it right to allow a a an individual in our country to extract the value of his name and likeness? Yes, that that's what's right. How do you do it? I'm not quite sure. I will tell you this, though. There's $69.01 million in dead money in college football this year. What do you mean? Just in coaches' buyouts. Oh, no, it's outrageous. 69. That's the actual number. And the seven Power Five, and that's just the Power Five. The seven Power Five coaches that got buyouts, they total $69.01 million. If you were to just average out 105 players per team in the 65 teams in the Power Five, you could give every single player in some form or fashion $10,000 with just the buyout money I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the $200 million facilities, and I'm not talking about all this other, um, the ways that, that programs and people try to hide money. $69 million for seven individuals to not work. That's incredible. I mean, folks, this is supposed to be like institutions of higher education are spending $70 million yeah. for people not to come to work. Let me, uh, I saw a mock draft today by a non dummy, uh, Todd McShay, and he had Darnold. I like Todd. Todd's yeah, good. Yeah. And he had Darnold Rosen. And I said, whether it's Rosen, Darnold, Darnold Rosen, they're going one, two. I had people on a couple of years ago with Ben Simmons. Oh, he's not a good teammate. And I'm like, he's a 6'10 point. And look at Put him now. 
Yeah, he's a six <laughs> ten point guard. He's going number one. They sure. just don't make those. Sure. And with Darnold and Rosen, I don't want to hear about uh, Minka Fitzpatrick and Bradley Chubb and Josh. Okay, Darnold Rosen, if they come out, are going one and two, regardless of of the order in which they're going. I would agree with that. Okay, yeah. I'm going to throw this out to you. This is what I hear because I think we all know Rosen's coming out. Uh, new coaching staff at UCLA. Yeah, it certainly feels that he way. Donald, co- I'm less certain about. Yeah, so am I. But let's just – Rosen, we both lean with. He had some injuries, yeah. new staff. You know, I get him coming out. So the the Donald, you should stay argument is this. He has got a lot of things to work on. Now, I just want everybody to think about this. Quarterback is an imperfect position. Wilson's too small. Aaron's too short. Breeze is too tiny. Brady had a lousy body. Eli and his brother Peyton couldn't run. Phillips got a lousy delivery. The question So be- does Roethlisberger, right? I mean, he's got a, a corky the, delivery. This idea that if Darnold comes back and faces Cal, he's going to clean up everything. He is, by his very nature, a little reckless. What's yeah. he going to get better at? Well, this I is mean, what he is. You're always, listen, reps always make you better. Okay. So re- regardless of who they're against, reps always make you better. Now, I I would argue that during his course of play, if you watch him in the back half of the season, and I'm talking about like just really break him down, he's much more refined than he was in the first half of the season. And he's actually in games. He was better second half than first half. Yes, he was. And he was better in the first half of this season than even he was last year. You can see the development of those things you're talking about. The knocking the kind of that that rust off, if you will, um, and kind of polishing the stone. Okay. He's a much better player now. I will say this about Darnold and Rosen, for that matter. Look at all the young quarterbacks having success. The NFL is more built for young quarterback yes. success now than it ever has been. Okay, Joel, if you were a top – okay, let's say you were a top um, – attorney's bad because you would need – let's say you're a top architect. Okay. No, you have to have an architectural degree to practice. You need a law degree. You need a doctorate. Let's say there's a career in which you don't need a degree. What's it? What's okay? Like music, the music industry. Okay, music industry. So Joel Klatt, you're in college. You're a sophomore. You redshirted in the music department. You're a sophomore. Now you're really good. (laughs) And the Boston Pops want you. The New York Symphony, the L.A. Symphony, San Francisco Pops. They all want you. Maybe number one. Now you could get a lot better with another year at Fuller's in Fullerton State. Right. Just go. What's the point? I don't disagree with that. Uh, I don't disagree. And and I think Darnold has enough reps. If it's one year. Oh, it's different. Like at the end of last year, now obviously he wasn't eligible, but I would have said, you know, he probably needs a little bit more time. I think Mark Sanchez needed more time. Yes. There are some guys that – but now with two full years as a starter. He's got 27 you're, starts or you're, something. And you're closer to that threshold. And I've said this number countless times on your show. If you look at the guys that have won Super Bowls, so they're the franchise Super Bowl winning quarterbacks in the NFL – in college, they started around 30 games, attempted around 1,100 passes right yeah, in there. you brought that in. And so Darnold is getting there. You know, he's over 20 now as far as number of starts. So if he comes back, he's going to be on the other th- side of that threshold and almost, you know, too experienced. Now you're getting into the, hey, we're just going to find your bad habits and knock you for them like Matt Leinert who fell in See, the draft See, that's a my bit. question. When he comes back next year, Our belief is he's got to be flawless. I mean, come on now. That's the problem. He was almost that this year. If you go, I watched every snap. If you go to the games where it was tight, Texas, Stanford, Utah, UCLA, Penn State last year. Washington State. Dude, he he's a good player. I guess my point is if you were at you if you were at USC and you were going to go, and you didn't need a degree in your field, a business or a, yeah. or a comm degree. Yeah, you would go. You would go. You, you, nobody thinks you're going to be perfect when you enter the job market. It's a developmental thing even in the NFL. I will say at this position, it's not always just about your football readiness. What's it about? Your maturity, your makeup. You know, are, are you ready for that emotionally? Well, he's not out there smoking blunts. He's a good kid. Well, that doesn't necessarily. I'm not. I'm not saying you're you're a bad guy and you got to work on your character. This is this is not a character indictment on Sam Darnold, but emotionally, to be very candid, I just didn't think he handled the pressure very well this that, season. I thought he, he. I thought he forced the issue. He said a little he wasn't, bit. You know, and and so yeah, a little bit. Now was that enough of a learning experience? So. 
You know, it, that's fair. No, I, you're, you're you're right about that. So I, there's another emotional component of this uh, that's that's not football. But I'm going to say this again, and I've said it all year long. Sam Darnold's a phenomenal football player. He really is. He's a phenomenal quarterback. He's going to be the first or second guy taken. Josh Rosen is incredibly skilled. If Josh Rosen didn't have some of the personal baggage, a little bit, I think he would probably be the overwhelming right. top prospect because he's more refined no. um, in the pocket yeah. as kind of that NFL style guy. Again, and I'm going to go back to this. Yeah, I, Ten I, seconds. I, I, <laughs> Darnold's more of a Russell Wilson. Josh Rosen is more of a, uh, uh, a Matt Ryan. Hi, everybody, and thanks for watching. We want you to subscribe here, here, to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1, First Things First with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.